also here he has already joined uh, is professor kc cabra from uh, department of commerce uh, northeastern hill university actually when we were planning for our course uh, we kept some people in reserve to whom we can tell to be ready at any point of time uh, so that if anyone any any speaker is unable to join we can call those people to speak immediately and uh, professor kabra was one of that actually all our department internal people we kept professor Ra dr raut is from our university next speaker is also from my department only so our people we kept in reserve so that if any disturbance is there in the crowd in the schedule we will call him uh, professor kabra is from nehu but we assume him very much part of mizoram university because uh, uh, till 2004 although he was uh, faculty of uh, nehu northeastern hill university but he was posted in the mizoram campus of nehu in december 2004 only he left for the main campus till then he was in mizoram so we still assume him part of our department only he is a very good friend of the department uh, I, uh, what to say I, i hard teacher is the not i hard is not proper word but uh, uh, passionate about teaching accounting and statistics numerical papers it was very difficult to bring him out of accounting we requested him not to take session on accounting but take something else so um, he could came somewhat out of accounting uh, thanks for you sir uh, so he decided finally to talk about business response to covid 19 uh, extension of csr activity uh, a brief about him uh, he joined nehu in uh, in september 1993 Uh, then as i told in december 2004 he joined main campus of nehu in shillong uh, he has written one book on the topic economic growth of mizoram which is one of the best research based book on uh, economy of mizoram still this book is uh, a book uh, any researcher in mizoram must have to read he has authored or published more than 40 papers in research journals or uh, as a book chapter or uh, proceedings uh, more than 40 papers publications he is having he has presented more than 35 papers in different national and uh, international seminars uh, he has produced more than 3 research scholars many undergoing as at present uh, he had been head of the department department of commerce nehu for two terms one first time in the uh during 2011 to 14 uh, 15 and now second term he is continuing since 2018 uh with this uh, i would like to request professor kabra sir to have to start his deliberation sir now time is yours uh, sir one more thing uh, our uh, participants there are 37 participants from different part of the country uh they are not having access to audio so they can put their questions in chat box so at the end we will be taking up those queries if he is having so you may start now sir sir okay thank you very much am i audible to all of you uh yes sir yes sir audible okay 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 nice hearing you thank you professor bhartandu for um, introducing me little uh, in little exaggerated manner anyway uh that's nice of you uh let me admit the fact that i am still closely aff affectionate to or affiliated to mizoram i consider aizol as my second home often whenever i find the opportunity to visit the uh, <coughs> mizoram university campus i often share this feeling that aizol is my second home especially longmel complex and uh, that uh, the campus where uh, tanshil where university campus is located because uh, there i lived for 12 years more than 12 years okay apart from that <clears throat> let me come to the straight uh, to the point or topic that is uh, corporate social responsibility uh, during pandemic times mm. so let us begin mm, let me share the screen first Here. Just to write. Ah, 
first confirm me whether the screen is visible. Uh, not yet, sir. Not yet. I think now. Yes, yes, it is coming now. Okay. Right. Just make it full screen. Yes, yes, I'll make it full screen. Oh, yes, one. Right. right. As I, uh, during introduction, I was told, uh, Professor Bhartandu shared that uh, I have a little affection with the accounting. So my topic of interest, which I wanted to share with you, was integrated reporting. But then I was conveyed that uh, since the participants are from across the country and they are from the sister discipline economics also, so better to choose a topic which may be of general interest. So then I preferred that, okay, let us let me share with some of the uh, corporate social responsibility related uh, interesting findings which came out or emerged out of uh, uh, during pandemic area. Okay. Uh, I'll quickly switch over to some of the preliminary tasks that uh, we have a proprietorship form, partnership form, then we call it company form of business organizations. So that is known as corporate body. Uh, this is just uh, giving you in brief, the uh, brief genesis of the origin of corporate body, that is social origin of corporate body. A corporate body deals with uh, lenders, suppliers, debtors, consumers, employees, communities, academics, biophysical environment, international governments, custom excise duties, and other tax authorities, NGOs as well, constituent bodies of governments, constitutions, because it needs to comply or follow, shareholders, and local government. So uh, there are many, you can say, um, bodies, the parties, uh, people, societies with which uh, a corporate body that is company interacts. And that is why there is a need. Since it is interacting with these many agencies and these many parties, uh, there has to be some, uh, you can say, norms for its uh, behavior. That's the genesis for corporate social responsibility. Then another is this, which I often share with this. There's a um, Clinton's given triple bottom line concept, which uh, is a balancing between triple piece, profit, plan, people, and planet. We all know that businesses are for profits, be it in any uh, form of organization, proprietorship, partnership, or company form, right? Uh, businesses are generally for profit, but profit can be earned only when people are there on the planet. People means society is there on the planet. And people can be there on planet only when planet is conserved. And planet is needed for even deriving uh, or you can say extracting necessary raw materials or obtaining necessary raw materials for uh, carrying on economic activities which Eglinton has nicely uh, transformed uh, and replaced uh, the profit, the P, stands, uh, the P which stands for profit into prosperity. Because uh, it's not only applicable for business organizations, there are not for profit organizations also. And there are other organizations which has a different objectives, but then prosperity comes to them also. So the, it's a balancing between uh, prosperity. Now, prosperity comes from planet. Obviously, there's a linkage. And prosperity comes from people. So prosperity depends on planet and people. And people depends upon planet as also the economic activities because it is the industries uh, which provides newer products to raise their living standards. Right? The planet, since it's a a common resource, it depends upon, uh, I mean, it is owned by none, means it is belongs to, it belongs to society. Okay, so there is an interlinkage. So now we talk about that there has to be a continuous interaction between prosperity, people and planet and the common area, which is highlighted here, that is the, uh, where the, all three circles are interacting, that is what sustainable, sustainability means 
any activity on the part of society or on, on the part of uh, companies in order in a quest to earn profits will not be sustainable if it does not take care and it does not balance between society conserving planet and then carrying on economic activities so now we can see since the sustainability concept has come up so what are the corporate responsibility in order to attain sustainable development there are three responsibilities which we can cite one is the corporate financial responsibility and that is inevitable be profitable is the first norm second is corporate environmental responsibility because planet need to be conserved planet need to be maintained planet cannot be upgraded but at least it need to be maintained or kept at its um, the present level and the third is the corporate social responsibility that society because there is a continuous interaction it's a basically give and take theory corporates are deriving as i say resources input resources especially raw materials from the mother earth that is uh, planet now if it is deriving raw materials from mother earth planet this belongs to society because it is in, uh, under the ownership of no one right it means it is taking taking then it must give it back so it must give it back to the society right Co corporates are um, uh, making available or getting the human resource from society so it must give it back to the society and so on so there is a continuous interaction which uh, in previous slide of Eklington's triple bottom line concept, the interaction of these three circles nicely depicting. An attempt should be made that these three circles should be pushed more closer so that the common area of the sustainability can be enhanced. Coming to now what CSR is all about, uh, which a company need to uh, incorporate into its core values. There are certain issues which are emerging with the continuous interaction of this planet, people and uh, prosperity. Human rights comes up, employee rights, environmental protections, because planet need to be conserved, community involvement, supplier relations, monitoring, stakeholders right, all these need to be, you can say, handled in the right spirit. So these are the issues which now corporate entities need to look into or need to handle them with the sophistication. And that is why we talk of CSR. Now, uh, let me just give you brief insights of the Indian roots of CSR also. This uh, corporate social responsibility in the Indian context is not a new, it's a very old, right? Uh, it has been the tradition right from Vedic times where a business entity is considered to be a legitimate and integral part of society, which also enterprise theory supports. Uh, from Vedas, you will agree that we read a uh, phrase, Vasudeva Kutambakam, which means the whole world is one family. Whole world is one family, means all are my brothers and sisters, then I should not exploit them at least. Simple thing is this. Same way, Sarva Loka Hitai, which means well-being of all stakeholders. And on that, the enterprise theory is best. Sarva Loka Hitai. The, the company should work or an enterprise should work for the well-being of all stakeholders. Previously, it was narrowly viewed that since the capital contributors are the owners, so company management should be responsible or accountable to them. No, company management should be accountable to them as also with the other stakeholders, say employees, society in general, creditors, debtors, the <clears throat> government, NGOs, and all. The, that's why I have given a social origin of corporate body, uh, and I started with that. So the CSR hmm, is a concept where companies voluntarily decide to contribute for a better society and cleaner environment. It cannot just be better society or it cannot be just a cleaner environment. There has to be both in a balanced way. So it's a concept where the companies integrate social and other useful concerns in their day-to-day -day operations. 
in their day-to-day -day operations for betterment of stakeholders and society in general. Why CSR is important? CSR is not only important from what we said that it has to do for societies and planet conservation. It is also in the interest of the company itself because a company which undertakes CSR hmm, uh, is able to build or uh, create positive impact in community. It can generate brand image, uh, increase customer loyalty, and reduce employee turnover. Employee turnover is the biggest problem for, you can say, many corporate organizations. So, um, and, and that turns into, that eats up the profitability part. So it's better to keep uh, expenses confined or redu uh, within the limit. Uh, it is better to reduce the employee turnover. Okay. Uh, customer loyalty is also dependent because that leads to sustainability of your products and sustainability of the organization. Because so long as customer patronizes your products, um, your, your profitability can be ensured. And profitability is a must for existence of a uh, business in the society. And of course, positive impact, because positive impact leads to loyalty. And of course, brand image, because that is a value adding activity of the company's uh, uh, economic activities. So there are other factors also that why uh, these days we talk uh, talk of CSR much. Uh, the, the businesses are now breaking the boundaries. Now the business uh, are not confined to uh, particular economic region because of the globalization, liberalization, privatization. So globalization and growth of global civil society. Repositioning of government in its role also. Now governments are also being questioned and uh, examining uh, into their own role, uh, you can say repositioning and uh, their new rules are being. Competition is also leading to it because we call, we often talk of peer pressure. So that's what peer pressure. So growth in competition is taking place. And of course, war for talent. Companies are competing for expertise. And um, there, one of the, uh, CSR is one of the tool to attract the talent from the competitors. Uh, so these are some of the, you can say, uh, reasons for uh, having CSR, corporate social responsibility uh, activities. The benefits we derive that uh, society as a whole is improved and public image is built and media visibility can throw a positive light and uh, brand value is created and uh, socially strong relationships uh, can be founded and um, it helps companies to stand out in competition. Mm, yes, it helps in positioning also. Uh, the other way we can look at that the CSR is needed to claim the legitimacy, we talk of licensing. There are two types of licensing. One is called formal licensing from government agencies or concern agencies. But the more stronger and more important license is the uh, social licensing. The society must accept the uh, continuance of economic activity by uh, one particular entity or enterprise. So claim legitimacy is very important. Same way. Seeking social licensing, that's what uh, both. One, social licensing to operate and then claiming legitimacy that allow me to exist. Reducing the social cost of unrest or say capital generations and so on. Uh, better compete, diffuse peer pressures, attract ethical investors. Nowadays we call up the e investors are not only educated, they are educated, uh, environmentally aware, ethically uh, conscious, and so on. So that's why uh, now attracting the investment into the company's projects, uh, the company need to uh, fulfill the de uh, ever increasing demands of the investors, uh, especially information demands of the investors, because investors want to decide best on the relevant and reliable information not only financial, but the non-financial information, which we often call it qualitative information. To satisfy uh, socially awakened stakeholders, enhance employees' performance, bring industrial praise, and avoiding 
upcoming stringent regulations and control means lobbying effect also. So these are the some of the needs for CSR. So now by now one can understand what is CSR. Basically, it is a self-regulation of an entity that reflects the entity's accountability and commitment to contribute to its well-being, uh, well-being of the communities and society through various environmental and social measures. There could be many uh, ways and means of uh, contributing. It is a management concept whereby entities integrate social as also environmental concerns into their business operations. Mm. Uh, it is generally understood a way through which entity strikes a balance between, you can say three conflicting, what you call a triple bottom line, which I already uh, covered in previous slides, the economic, environmental, and social imperatives. Because these three are in a conflicting way, but then company management tries to uh, uh, establish a balance between these two. These are few standard definitions of CSR. Allow me to skip because uh, many of you may be knowing. Mm. One is given, uh, the father of CSR is known to be uh, Bowen. So Bowen has given that uh, it is the obligation of businessmen to pursue those policies and to make those decisions or to follow those lines of actions which are desirable in terms of the objectives and values of the society. Means the actions of the companies cannot be out of the values which are prevalent at one point of time in society. That's what it is saying. And on the same line, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development and European Commission has given these definitions. Uh, we can find the social accounting or uh, a, a, you can say related part of CSR, the footprint of CSR in one of the report of the True Blood Committees also. This is what uh, reference is given from True Blood Committee uh, report, which was, uh, uh, they um, came out in 1975. Uh, this is what the Carroll's model of CSR, um, where we say that, uh, Yes, economic responsibility is must, then comes the ethical responsibility and um, social responsibility. Now, when we talk of social responsibility, there are two types. One is legal compliance, legal responsibility, and then second comes addition over and above the legal is called uh, philanthropic. Hmm. So it's a four part, economic, then legal, then comes ethical, and then comes philanthropic, and some of the activities are mentioned here. Now, what is the difference between economic responsibility, legal responsibility, ethical and philanthropic can be understood by these words, which are say, economic is a necessity, but legal is requirement. But ethical is expectation, not requirement, expectation. And philanthropic is desired. Now, right side, there are some, you can say, ways and means are given uh, to fulfill or achieve these uh, activities. Say, for example, uh, requirement. So be economical, miss earn necessary profit, uh, profit which is necessary for existence of its own, must be after complying with all applicable laws, right? Maybe environmental laws, consumer laws, mm, the laws affecting mm, employees and so on. At the same time, if level, because law, legal platform provides a minimum floor level only. So the actual practices of the companies while carrying on economic activities may be uh, above them legal. And that's what we say expected of business by society, where we can say avoid questionable practices, mm, respect the spirit of law, mm, and um, uh, ensure that uh, the activities are carried above the minimum uh, required by law. Means, say, for example, avoid child labor, avoid um, excessive consumption of fertilizers and chemicals and so on, which are, you can say, which carries health hazards more than the um, benefit, uh, which may be questionable for, for the, you can say, which may be detrimental to societies in general, maybe in a very short run, maybe profitable to firm. So that, that profit, that sh uh, short term objective should not be in mind. Mm -hmm. And above all is the philanthropic activities. Mm -hmm. 
where certain support programs for community development, education, and other, you can say, empowerment and voluntary <coughs> and improvement programs can be taken up. Just see. Uh, as I said that in India, it, uh, the CSR activities, uh, the roots of CSR is very ancient. And uh, there are many uh, organizations, uh, renowned business houses were carrying on um, CSR activities uh, without, you can say, waiting for uh, any mandatory regulations in this regard, or uh, you can say, um, we have companies like 2013, uh, which has uh, made a dent in the um, regulatory field that uh, it made a CSR compulsory for Indian companies. So from 2013 onward, we say it is uh, compulsory, mandatory. Uh, but then the pattern in general, uh, the CSR in India is being talked of from somewhere in 2008-9. But before that also CSR was there and a research was conducted in 2008 by SOHM KPMG, it is not my own. Uh, some findings are given. So um, through that research, it was found that yes, those companies which were undertaking CSR voluntarily were spending thematically. There are there were certain themes chosen by them and they were spending on that. And it is uh, reported that uh, nearly uh, 16 companies out of 24 were concentrating or choosing certain activities under CSR. Uh, on three to five thematic areas and uh, six companies were having more than six thematic areas but most of majority were catering uh, say four were catering to one or two thematic areas and so on uh, so i mean first the um, it was understood that how csr is being undertaken and how it is being organized by companies and so on so this, this type of findings are there. So probably I consider that this type of study was at a root in coming out with the uh, provis uh, mandatory provisions through companies like 2013, right? So 37% corporates uh, were undertaking CSI initiatives through a well-structured separate foundation, uh, say uh, Tata Foundation, say Ajim Premji Foundation and so on. Mm. Reliance Foundation. 58% companies were having separate CSR department. May, some other companies were just basically partnering with um, organizations or NGOs or uh, partnering with government departments. And when it comes to reporting, uh, many companies were uh, carrying on uh, G, uh, adopting GRI guidelines. Mm. Uh, some were adopting UN Global uh, Compact and so on. So this is what the brief finding about the uh, CSR activities during voluntary area era. Uh, there could be three types of, uh, you can say, attitudinal behavior while carrying on uh, corporate social responsibility activities on the part of company management. Uh, one could be, say, um, from very narrow or compliance best point of view. One is reactive mode, say, you take first and give later. And second is the broadest. You give first and take later. That's what. Uh, where we say, uh, when it comes to first mode, that very, very narrow, um, view that CSR, that is just compliance, means uh, the majority companies, which were not, you can say, uh, adopting CSR activities before 2013 under voluntary era, they were waiting for that since it is not legally required, why should we undertake? So, I mean, they believed in that if it is legal, we comply, otherwise not. So legal and traditional stakeholders only, they were trying to serve. And traditional stakeholders are the only shareholders because in narrow sense, shareholders are the company owners. Hmm. The reactive modes where the benefits are already derived or drawn but in order to derive the benefits, some damage has taken place or um, you can say uh, caused. So that damage repairing activities are done. So you can say direct to stakeholders and short term impact related or reactive modes 
but in uh, broadest uh, sense where we uh, the corporates give to society on their own first and then they try to reap the benefits at a later stage that's a broad range of stakeholders uh, that is long term impact means uh, as i say in the first column they look at the traditional stakeholders only capital providers but here they look into other than capital providers the employees creditors debtors and government and all so basically <clears throat> from business case point of view the in a narrow sense only pain alleviation is undertaken in reactive mode it is cost benefit rational is applied not pain alleviation and not broader cost benefit is it beneficial to me i incur otherwise not but in the broadest sense it is strategic alignment they they make it as a strategic tool to uh, build image and so on hmm. or to stand out means that help in strategic positioning level of engagement also that is compliance with legal responsibilities only uh, in the first case narrow sense but in reactive mode it is harm minimization means whatever harm is caused in order to carry on economic activities that harm should be compensated so i am trying to minimize it but in broader sense it is not harm in which it is much beyond that is social value creation influence wise narrow compliance it is just market actions but in reactive mode they try to remold the market and uh, yes in broader sense it is a policy influence the role also that in narrow sense just resource is provided but in reactive sense it is a facilitator and in a broader sense the csr can be uh, in a uh, enabler for driving positive change so these are all what i'm talking to uh, the managerial attitudinal uh, directions towards the csr activities and that's why uh, different companies csr outcomes are different uh the their achievements are different because their dimension changes now coming to the provision i think you all know about it that since 2013 the a certain class of companies which are prescribed here whose net worth is greater than 500 crore turnover is greater than or equal to 1000 crore net profit is greater than or equal to 5 crore any one condition is fulfilled then such company is required to essentially undertake social responsibility activity in coming year okay now when we say net worth or turnover or net profit which are you can say exceeding or equal to this prescribed limit of 500 crore or 1000 crore or 5 crore hmm, that is not on a particular moment wise it is say average of the pre previous 3 years if average of the previous 3 years net worth is now 500 crore or equal turnover is um, 1000 crore or more net profit is 5 crore or more then any one condition is fulfilled the company is compulsorily required to comply section 135 of the company act 2013 and it need to incur minimum 2% of its average profit when we say average profit then the period comes so average profits of the previous 3 years it need to spend towards the csr activity that is what the provision is now when we talk of company then it includes every company also it may have a connection so it includes every company holding company subsidiary company even it includes foreign companies right so that what known to us uh and while spending this 2% funds where it need to spend there has been certain activities has been prescribed we often refer the 10 activities and that 10 activities are mentioned in uh, schedule 7 so some projects or programs which are specified in schedule 7 can be taken of course these programs may be undertaken by board of directors based on the recommendation of csr committee so these are the you can say management aspects of csr on regular or continuum basis in the company 
Now, the, the Act not only requires that the company meetings the specific condition required to undertake CSR activities need to spend 2% fund, that's not sufficient enough. It need to have a CSR committee on its board and the CSR committee must be active and independent and it must have a CSR policy. So under CSR policy, CSR committee must choose certain projects and programs and recommend it to board of directors for its further execution. That's what it is saying. Uh, it includes even what you said, um, certain donations also, certain, you can say, uh, activities which company may not be able to undertake on its own. There may be collaboration required. So the section further specifies that a contribution can be made uh, in the form of donation or you can say collaboration can be had with these type of institutions. So contribution can be made to uh, Prime Minister's National Relief Fund or Prime Minister's uh, what we recently known CARES. Mm. Uh, similarly, any fund set up by either government of India or any state government for relief and welfare of STs, uh, SCs and OBCs and minorities and women. Contribution can be made to certain, uh, you can say, central or state government uh, funded or PSUs for uh, incubators also. Public funded universities like uh, Mizoram University, Nehu or any other. Mm. Or CSIR, uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, IITs, ICMR, DRDO. Okay, so their contribution can be made. Uh, collaboration can be made. National laboratories, autonomous bodies where the funds can be um, given. Department of Energy, uh, Atomic Energy and uh, Electronics and Information Technology and DST funded uh, research te uh, technology, um, maybe in science or medicines or engineering, where uh, the purpose is to encourage sustainable development goals, right? So these are the um, institutions and uh, the funds where if company do not want to undertake CSR activities on its own, can be contributed. Or you can say um, some kind of collaboration can be made. In spite of this, if the fund is not being spent, hmm, then the ongoing project could be of say one year or two year or three year duration. So obviously the entire amount may not be spent in the year where it is uh, supposed to spend then in that case, the unspent amount need to be deposited in a specified account that is called unspent corporate social responsibility account, specially to be opened in a uh, scheduled bank. And it, the money need to be deposited within 30 days. Now, out of this, it can carry on the uh, that project spending for next three years. And in spite of um, the um, uh, completion of that term, if company can't spend the money or if amount remain unspent, then that money need to be transferred to central government's account uh, that is called specified fund within 30 days of completion of three years period. So these are the CSR um, uh, activities which are permitted under schedule seven. Number one, eradicating extreme hunger and poverty, promoting education, gender equality, woman empowerment, same way reducing child mortality and improving uh, maternal health, ensuring environmental sustainability, employment enhancing vocational skills, social business projects, hmm. contributing to uh, this uh, um, state created funds, the National Relief Fund and uh, Prime Minister, that is what CARES, um, PM CARES, or similar such funds as we say uh, for the economic development of SCs or STs or BCs, minorities and women, and any other which may be prescribed by companies at from time to time, right? Uh, these are depicted here in this diagram that these are the schedule seven, there were 10 activities are permitted. Hmm. Now these 10 activities of schedule seven uh, can be mapped against what I started with the first slide, people, profit and planet. This is what people profit and planet. At the same time, see, it is said that India is the first country which has made a 
um, CSR a mandatory activity in the entire world, right? And this was the first. At the same time, at a uh, global level also, developments were taking place. People were, uh, the, it was being talked of sustainable development. So uh, at a UN level, sustainable development goals, right? Uh, which were adopted uh, in 2015. So if you match, uh, then you see like this, the sustainable development goals, which are 17 in number, and the CSR activities, which are 10 in number, may be classified, which relates to the welfare of people, means society, and which relates to the conservation of planet or Earth, or you can say environment. So that way, these are divided into two categories. Hmm. One can see it, and if there is any confusion, you may raise it. Same, these CSR activities can be again correlated with these sustainable development goals. The 10 activities of CSR and the 17 activities uh, of uh, 17 SDG goals can be mapped again, and that is what given here. Hmm. So, of the 10, uh, this one. Uh, eradicating hunger, promoting gender equality, contribution to the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund, promoting education, contributions to uh, or funds provided to tech, uh, technology incubators, and so on. These have been related with this one, two, three, six, like that. These are given as uh, blocks are given in different colors. These represent corresponding uh, the SDG number, Sustainable Development Goal number. Hmm. Eradicating hunger. It is covered by SDG 1, 2, 3, and 6. This is 1, 2. 1, no poverty. 2, zero hunger. Uh, 3, good health and well being. And 6, that is what um, clean water and sanitation. Hmm. So that's what. So this is what mapping. The point here is of saying that CSR become more prominent because India is a um, member to UN and committed to attain sustainable development goal by 2030. Now, sustainable development goals 2030 alone at a uh, government level cannot be achieved unless the every component of the country, uh, the economic system is made, uh, is given a role to play. And that's why it comes to corporate bodies to combine. That's why CSR is now mapped with the SDG goals that how if these 10 CSR activities as specified in Schedule 7 are undertaken, can a company claims that they are contributing towards the attainment of sustainable development goals and how? So that's what this mapping is given. Now, not only mapping, this mapping has brought the results also. Hmm. From 2014-15, the CSR in India has become mandatory. Until 1819, the companies were spending 2% of, on an average, 2% of their average profits, right, in every year. Now, a study has been conducted and it has been found that CSR funds spent by different companies in India over these four, uh, five years, uh, five to six years, has resulted into contribution of the sustainable development goal number one, two, three, four, five, and that way all 17. Now, looking into it, the most achievable is the SDG 17. And that is SDG 17, that is 85% impact. That's what talking of partnership means when incurring CSF fund should be partnered with Miss given should be given a role play to others in society. That is what it is a partnership for the goals. So that's why it is highly attained. Then comes to your SDG three, and SDG three is well being, good health and well being. That has been focused by uh, through CSR activities. Then seventy eight percent, two and sixteen, two and sixteen talks about zero hunger and peace, justice, and strong institutions means the funds which were spent were directed to attain these objectives. That's what it says. Least attained is SDG 4. Why least attained SDG 4? It talks about quality education. Most of the CSR funds have been given for even promoting educations. 
but still it is lagging. Quality education and education, there are two different things. Hmm. So right now, the uh, focus is there or attempt is there to uh, attain the education at large. So it's a mass education. Quality education is yet to come. Okay, that is a, you can say, it may be focused in the times to come, future. Same way list attending is SDG 5. That 5 is gender equality. Yes, gender equality is now being talked. Say, we talk about the board's composition also, and there also we say that how board is composed, whether um, gender equality is, or uh, gender is given, for, uh, balanced or not, right? It means now it is being taken up. So in times to come, these other, you can say, least attending uh, sustainable development goals may find due uh, focus in future. But most frequently, as I say, the first was the poverty and hunger and good health and sanitation, all this. Okay. Coming to CSR committee, there has to be a minimum three or more directors with at least one independent directors. But then you may say that sir, there may be a private company and may not have uh, uh, three directors. No, minimum two directors. And in that case, the two directors can uh, uh, together themselves may constitute a CSR committee. Uh, for them, it is waived also. Unlisted and private company need not to appoint independent directors. In case of foreign companies, there has to be two member CSR committee, but one has to be from India. Right? Bo both cannot be foreigners. Simple thing is this. The responsibility of CSR committee, I already explained you uh, that it has to have the first frame the CSR policy and from the CSR policy, it, uh, it need to pick up the activities which are to be undertaken in a particular time frame. Then it need to um, study those projects in detail and uh, estimate the expenditure and recommend the execution of the same to uh, board. And then at a later, it need to monitor the execution monitor the execution of the projects, monitor the execution of CSR policy also. And it need to report uh, CSR related activities. That's what continue. So uh, the board's duty is also to approve and disclose CSR policies and implement the CSR activities and ensure that it, uh, the company spends at least 2% of the average profit. Okay. Uh, but there may be a reason uh, many times we found that companies uh, were not able to spend what was required in the law. Okay, then there was a condition that if company fails to spend, it need to specify the reason through disclosures. And now the finding after six years of its implementation that majority of the companies were seeking the excuses of not spending the money citing some reasons here and there okay and probably that was the reason that this last provision is replaced by penal provisions recent uh, uh, amendment which has taken place now company has to spend at least two percent of average net profit towards the csr and no reason need to be assigned in case of failure, then it has to face the penalty. Okay. This is what the slide in support of what I said you just now. The study has been made from 1415 to 1920, and it is found. One good point is this, that there were companies taking it positively, and not only spending just 2% of what is required by law, they were proactively spending more than 2%, more than prescribed. And that is what it was 12% uh, of the companies were spent, uh, were there in 1415. Uh, in 1920, it reached to 28%. So that's a very uh, good point. Uh, there were 36% um, companies, 30% uh, uh, companies which were 
you are spending less than 2%. Less than 2%. So required by law, 2%, but they were spending less than 2%, maybe for certain excuses. And that number has gone down. From uh, 30%, it has gone down to 18%. That is also a very good uh, development. Also. There were companies which were very rigid to spend only 2%, exactly 2%. And that number is remains more or less same and that is negligible 4 to 5 percent. But then strange thing is this, that almost in all years, roughly around 50 percent of the companies were not at all spending towards the, uh, not at all complying with the 2 percent requirement, though they were liable to spend, but they were citing some reasons not to spend. Okay. And that has resulted into the amendment of this provision that now companies has to <coughs> either spend or face the penalty. Yes, they need to uh, uh, pay more than what is, uh, you can say, the amount, um, you can say, legally, um, which they need to spend under this section 135 plus penalty they need to get. So now come in times to come, companies will spend. Uh, I mean, hopefully the behavior will uh, change and hopefully this sizable pro proportion will reduce. That's what I'm just giving you. That this was the picture before uh, COVID period. Okay. Uh, this is what the penalty. Uh, you may allow me to skip. Uh, uh, this is what about the CSR uh, reporting. Not only you need uh, the CSR related activities are to be undertaken. These need to be reported because there are, as we say, ethical investors, socially conscious investors. They need the information before their decision making. Okay. And that is why they need to, uh, company need to uh, report it. Uh, then where to report? It has to be reported in the board of directors report. There has to be mention of CSR policies, then composition of CSR committees, and then prescribed CSR expenditure. And till now it was this. So they said that if could not be spent, then reasons for non-spending should be given. And it should be signed by CEO or MD or chairman of CSR committee. Now what was happening? The one more, uh, I mean, few minutes will be taken uh, towards the uh, analysis of the CSR spending uh, during pre-COVID era. So from 2015 to 19, if spending is uh, analyzed, it is uh, now from this diagram, it can be uh, understood that most of the funds were spent for education and livelihood program. And 25% um, funds were directed towards the health and sanitation, and then uh, went for and uh, other, I mean, uh, the rural development and environment. The others are the miscellaneous, so let's not. And I think that was the need. The initial need was this, that to uh, spread the mass level education and to bring in the livelihood programs because that were to remove the poverty that was the needed, a need of the hour and improve the health. Class is going on, okay. Uh, it, another detailed uh, analysis uh, is made here, and that is what theme-wise CSR spending, uh, and that was matching with the previous diagram. But here, more details are given. Uh, the amount is also quoted. Okay, so that's what from 14, 15 to 18, 19, or 19, uh, I mean, pre-COVID period, uh, the allocation of funds were there. Uh, State-wise also, if you look into, Mm, then these are the state-wise distribution of CSR spending. And uh, one can see here that the, uh, the red blocks, that is what uh, northeastern part where we are there, uh, the least beneficiaries of CSR funds. Uh, the white also, no CSR spending in maturity, but then Rest of the, the different colors are there, whereas percentage are also return and the visual. Now, what I said, uh, there is a no spending that should not be misunderstood. That is what portrayed here. In next slide, it is clear to you. These are the top 10 states and top five states. 
the top 10 states from the uh, uh, you can say beginning of the list i mean in order of um, in order of declining i mean highest uh, beneficiaries and bottom five where the least spending was done and that's why the middle states are missing this white color are the middle states okay the csr funds were spent but these are uh, neither in the top uh, 10 category nor in the bottom five category so maharashtra um, received a lot of funds obviously we can understand maharashtra is an industrial state more industries are there and it is a part of the company's uh, csr duty that they need to spend funds first in the uh, low immediate vicinity so obviously maharashtra state has received more funds same uh, the next beneficiary is the rajasthan and then karnataka and so on and the least spent are the nagaland mizoram meghalaya goa and tripura okay uh, among this uh, least five states i'm a bit worried about goa i don't know why the funds have been spent so less in goa because goa is not that way industrially poor but in other states we know there are no industry is the these states do not figure on the industrial map of india and that's why the least benefit funds are there but anyway in times to come it it indicates that probably uh, the new norm may come up in future either voluntarily or maybe mandatorily at a later stage that there may be some equitable distribution of funds across the states industry wise spending if you analyze then it is uh, this that uh, banking and finance companies have contributed a lot and uh, then oil lubricant and refinery and petrochemicals because see this the uh, looking into the very nature of this oil lubricant refineries and petrochemicals because they are related to the environment mm. so i mean they follow the what we can say the reactive mode so whatever the damage that in order to minimize the damage perhaps they have spent a lot and they have come up with this one. so this is what that um, the banking and finance they need to contribute csr funds and then oil lubricant and refineries because of the uh, very nature of the operations they have spent more uh, the other uh, among others is this computer software is like banking and finance um, computer software and hardware related because these are are uh, having no industrial operations so they need to whatever is your taxable profits um, uh, which qualifies for csr they have to contribute then so they are the contributors the other com companies are uh, you can say relatively contributing lesser probably it may improve in future that's what you can say but this is what the picture till today now coming to the real topic csr during pandemic on 30th january 2020 who world health organization declared covid a public health emergency of international concern that has caused an unprecedented restriction of resources in terms of speed and scale of mobilization at that point of time more people were on lockdown than were alive during world war 2 community and society everyone has to play its own uh, role because that was the need of the hour following it 14 march 2020 government of india also declared this outbreak of coronavirus a notified disaster and this was essential without which the government was not able to utilize the funds which were standing at the credit of sdrfs state disaster response fund this funds are already available but the fund could not be withdrawn and could not be utilized so in order to enable the government to do it it has declared first notified disaster to to uh, so that the funds could be uh, spent for temporary uh, accommodations and food supplies and medical care for patients and people in quarantine facilities hmm. So that's what the notification facilitated. Not only deploying funds for containment measures, but also channel funds for procurement of essential equipments for setting up testing laboratories because the testing laboratories were very scanty. On 23rd March 2020, the government came up with again 
uh, explanations or um, that all expenditure related to COVID-19 management by companies is announced as permissible expenditure under CSR. Because there was a lot of confusion. People used to refer to this um, Schedule 7. And the Schedule 7 nowhere talks about the COVID. Okay. So one explanation was given here that like combating H, um, AIDS and HIVs and mental, uh, maternal and other diseases. So then it says that other diseases. So it takes, uh, it's more liber more general, more broad, and the companies can interpret liberally and can spend it. So, I mean, that explanation was given that now companies can spend all these funds and it qualifies for CSR spending. So this was a, you can say, uh, way forward uh, given that the company should come forward and take the responsibility and partner with the government. So further clarified that expenses relating to promotion of healthcare, preventive healthcare, sanitation, and disaster management also qualify for CSR. Hmm. Of course, there were many ethical people, ethical business leaders who were not waiting for this, and they started diverting, uh, contributing their funds uh, for combating uh, COVID-19. Now they, there are instances available. Yes, um, recognizing the need for having dedicated national fund to deal with emergency and distress situations uh, such as COVID-19 and maybe in future um, something new, maybe to provide relief to affected people and charitable, uh, a charitable trust, the full name, Prime Minister's Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situation Fund, PM Care Fund was set up on 28th March, 2020. On the same day, Minister of Corporate Affairs amended Schedule 7 and notified that all contributions to PM Care Fund and PM National Relief Fund also qualify for towards a mandatory CSR spending. And this has resulted into contribution of 8,814 crore to PM Care Fund. Okay. Uh, besides that, many corporates motivated on their own uh, and they came up to in response to COVID-19 management um, through manufacturing PPE kits, driving relief efforts in their community and so on, because it was the need of the hour. Now the distribution of 8,814 crore, which I said here, it has come up like this. 5,565 crore came from private sector and 3,249 crore has come from public sector. On 26 August 20, government amended CSR norms, any company if you engage in, now this is what promoting or motivating the company and company operations to bring up certain solution to this disease, say medicines. But that medicine cannot be developed without R&D, sufficient R&D. So the need for undertaking R&D is urgently felt and that's why government amended CSR norm and said that any company, if you engage in R&D activity in its normal course of business, may undertake R&D activity related to new vaccine, drugs, and medical devices related to COVID-19. And this period, this window is still open because it is permitted for three years, that is 2021 to 22, 23. Of course, certain conditions applies. What conditions apply? company may not be able to, or all companies may not be able to undertake R&D activity on its own. That's why it is made. That R&D activity need to be carried in collaboration with specified public institutions, which we already discussed in previous uh, slides, and separate disclosure of such activities in uh, CSR report. These are the uh, COVID-19 related CSR initiatives which companies have undertaken. Five categories are there. First, provision for healthcare. Second, health system. Response to water sanitation and hygiene. And response to poverty and livelihood needs. And response to educational needs of children. Since it was so pressing, so response to educational needs of children was given lesser attention. More attention was strengthening health system. Strengthening health system. And equal needs were given, weightage were given to um, uh, water, sanitation, hygiene, and 
response to poverty and livelihood program and healthcare services right uh, this is what the um, uh, mapping again that during covid the csf funds and the pm care fund which was contributed were spent now state wise what is the beneficiary who are the beneficiaries now here it says again maharashtra sent top maharashtra could receive 17% of total funds why maharashtra because it was worst hit from covid right as it has been one of the worst impacted states then was karnataka 10% and then odisha 9% scope right second and third respectively so this is what the state wise uh, spending of the csr funds during covid period now further we can relate and we can understand this is what the activity wise the total spending during uh, covid period 8.5% of funds were spent for women and child welfare 3.8% funds were for rehabilitation 18.5% were for preventive health care more focus was given on preventive health care of course 18.5% were given to us the donation means to government because many companies do not have other requisite infrastructure to undertake preventive health care or rehabilitation so either they partner or they just prefer contributing to this of course 19.2% of the funds were spent for food security and that was we know no? dry ration kits and uh, meal for all and so on and 14.6% were spent for employee safety and hygiene because um, work is also to be go uh, carry on simultaneously uh, front workers front line workers the um, certain you can say industries which were producing this medical uh, equipments there the employees were all working and the employee safety and hygiene 14.6% for this spend more related to you can say hospitals and doctors and institution so this is what the analysis which i have received from uh, i could see from one of the research now further we can say uh, somewhere it is written one one is technology the the technology no no yeah 2.3% fund support on technology incubators that what the given details for technology first the infrastructure spending almost one third one third technology infrastructure programs and partnerships and technology de-risking okay because te technology need to be handled carefully so de-risking also so one, you can say distribution of funds were like this uh intervention categories during covid period of two years the spending can be categorized like this the 80 percent of the company spent funds towards the support system only okay also contributed roughly 70% of companies have contributed for preventive and diagnostic preventive measures more spent and diagnostic help was given to government in in partnership so these categories are priorities for funding in the pandemic situations the priority allotment and that is why we said uh, so, uh, that the children education They received the list, right? So that's what um, the companies could not pay attention because it was not normal period. Same with provision of healthcare services. Seventy-eight hmm. percent companies were engaged in provis uh, making provision for healthcare services because healthcare services we used to say that even forget about. Um, the state level also state le capital state capital level also there was you can say a uh, dire need of healthcare services uh, very poor services especially in northeast uh, so lot more fundings were required from all directions from all possible sources so even companies were given the due platform and companies came forward so 78% of the companies engaged in that uh, uh, preventive uh, uh, prevention against covid 19 means uh, how it can be prevented 44% companies have spent funds directed funds are made available towards the treatment control and management because here the partnership is required with the hospitals and ngos and 33% were actually involved in screening and diagnostic analysis 
Yes, target beneficiaries for preventive health. Obviously, it was local population, surrounding community, and next is the rural population, because it was um, idea was that the, okay if it can be controlled at urban level also it is all right it should not spread in the rural area, right? So efforts were made towards that. So uh, you can say first was the local population, and then the fund was made available for rural populations, and. The third priority give, was given to migrant and daily wage workers. Yes, how it was the funds were spent on preventive health. First was collaboration with government agencies. Second was collaboration with hospitals, and the third was the utilization of businesses. So the business infrastructures were used at a third level. First was the direct. The government agency need to be contacted, and hospitals need to be contacted. So that way, the funds were routed, and these were the uh, achievements, uh, the beneficiaries, and that was the spend. Come to the next. Uh, this talks about health system strengthening. Sixty-four percent companies contributed towards the uh, provision for medical products, say PPE kits, mask, and so on. 52% companies contributed for service delivery and human health 49% companies engaged themselves for community health 8% companies however 8% companies has promoted health insurance also at the same time the target beneficiaries of this uh, preventive health uh, strength, uh, strengthening of preventive health 43% people of the local communities were the beneficiaries then rural community of 30% and the others are the rest you can see the these were the benefits the mode of implementing this community engagement community engagement was done through the use of technology because lockdown was there so movement and physical uh, canvassing and uh, was not possible so through technology okay and 28% through collaboration with government agencies and then local leadership was used in in villages yes local leadership was used the sarpanch and the you can say elders of the villages were convinced and then uh, through them the rural uh, covid management was ensured the response to water and sanitation uh, needs 78% companies spent for public places sanitation of public places the 63% companies spent for i mean uh, if you total this is not 100% it means what while deciding of where to spend uh, money they have chosen more than two, you can say two projects or you can say two projects not one project suppose i have a 2 crore with me to spend i can say that okay let me spend 50 lakh for sanitation of public place and uh, 1 crore for uh, response to at risk and 50 000, uh, 50 lakh for water and sanitation like that so companies are figuring into this and that's why it is not total is not 100% but yes this speaks of the company management's manager person's attitude the the, the behavioral part that uh, they were giving top priority to whom so that's what sanitation public places was the at the top priority then there was the response to at risk group means handling or you can say taking care of the risky group and the last one was uh, sanitation uh, provision for water and sanitation the target beneficiaries of this was the frontline workers then essential service and then migrant workers in this order of course mode of distribution was collaboration with government agencies then collaboration with uh, uh, sorry sanit uh, manufacturing because unless masks are manufactured unless pp kits are manufactured this cannot be achieved this cannot reach to frontline workers so that's what collaboration with government agencies that was the one route and then manufacturing and contributing to that even everyone a common man also could uh, decide to contribute by way of making mask 
many tailor, tailors came forward to come, uh, make masks and uh, do, uh, help it. So that was the first and second category. And third was the collaboration with self-help group. In, in rural area, uh, the management was also through self-help groups. Response to food and hunger needs, we have seen it. Migrations that have taken place. Mm, uh, so uh, the, there were people who were without meal or there were in dire need of milk and so on. So many uh, companies have spent on cooked meals as well as dry ration kits and so on. So 79% companies have come up for cooked meals and dry rations. 68% providing foods to people who are at risk and 14% to strengthen the food security. So that was a list. Food security doesn't come because that was not in a, uh, uh, what you can say, in a, in a, at the center of the uh, debate because it was a on the spot urgency. Target beneficiaries were same 31% migrant daily workers because the mostly the food need to be reached to them, cooked meal or dry ration kit need to reach to them. So uh, migrant workers. Next were urban poor uh, and rural populations, more, more or less same percentage, so we can see this. So migrant workers, then rural poor and urban poor. The mode of spending, providing food relief through collaborating with the government agencies and collaborating with NGOs. These are the ways hmm, which we have seen, we have witnessed it. Response to poverty and livelihood needs. 40% companies made a provision for essential items and services. 33% companies also su supported sustaining livelihood initiatives for at-risk communities and then provision for economic sustenance. That's a left or residual part. The target beneficiaries were 32%. Abhraji, migrant yeah uh, i'll spare, spare some time yes. for interaction uh, but yes, i don't yes. know how many how many uh, still how many figures are there mm, no problem sir uh, yeah. this, probably this is the last uh, figure and then the few slides are there yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For because interpretations for interpretations. because i know i, I know yeah. it is difficult to interrupt you <laughs> you can no, 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 uh, no, so no, your no, flow no. is very don't good worry. in fact yeah maybe <laughs> maybe uh, i may cross by 10 minutes that's all <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Maybe that's all again, but I'm uh, so far I'm going uh, in a, yes, um, uh, right on the time path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So 32% uh, were the beneficiaries from migrant and daily workers, and then 26% uh, were from urban poor, and then rural population. Again, same thing. Okay. Uh, th these were the beneficiaries. Hmm. Now come to impact. I mean the. Mm -hmm what we learn and what we can conclude. Hmm. Obviously, one would agree that uh, pandemic has uh, been disastrous, not only in India, it is worldwide. Hmm. But one positive thing that has taken place, and that is the idea of CSR to society is pushed deeper into corporate consciousness, which is reflected by this uh, statement made by Sudha Murthy. Chairman, chairperson of Infosys Foundation. CSR can't be merely a job, it is a passion. Similarly, the other one, uh, through CSR, they can be a partner in change as a responsible corporate citizen hmm, in much more diligent and sensible manner than just donating funds. If you're donating funds, means you are somehow getting rid of your legal responsibility, but that is not sufficient. Actually, government needs partnering your support system. That's what. So, partner to various government and NGOs. So, this has established that CSR, concept of CSR has taken further deeper into the society aspect, social dimension. So, lessons we can say, COVID-19 has taught us that the companies can no longer carry the business as usual and Corporate irresponsibility is the obverse of CSR. It has raised a serious question. Should the role of corporations be limited to CSR expenditure and its disclosure? No, obviously not. Partnership. Right? 
Since the enactment of Companies Act 2013, there has been a steady growth in mandatory corporate spending. That is fine. Mm. And to be fair with corporate world, the idea of CSR has slowly seeped into corporate awareness, even before the mark of pandemic and after the mark of pandemic, it has moved to social dimension. These are some of the figures in uh, total because I have given you the presentation of the uh, CSR in last six years pre-COVID and two years post-COVID. Okay, so here uh, the fun figures are given and the growth in CSR funding over the six years is given 18%. Mm. And there were certain slight changes in the what we can say the people who uh, companies who were uh, spending uh, two percent or some missed to spend by two percent, so that what uh, six percent decline in that companies which were spending lesser than two uh, percent. So that decline in that number itself is uh, a positive signal. New trend in CSR spending is noted that uh, now it is increasingly directed towards sustainable development goal, okay, and other national objectives. 2020, the year was marked uh, with mixed uh, natural calamities. It is not marked only with the COVID-19 activities, which has taken the biggest chunk of funding. We have seen the other uh, spending elsewhere also. The reason being was that the this year was marked with many, you can say, natural calamities, cyclones, floods, Mm. in large part of com country, mm, which have resulted into what's a, uh, the, uh, you can say, disaster, uh, undertaking this uh, disaster relief operations in Assam, Kerala, Bihar, Odisha, West Bengal, and so on. So you can say twofold. The COVID-19 management, which was the need of the hour, plus the immediate relief from the natural calamity of the uh, the hurricane and all this, right? Now there were three basic policy changes uh, that were responsible for change in the nature and quantum of CSR spending because we have seen what was the three. The first, allowing the spending of CSR funds on COVID-19 related activities in addition to contributing to PM care fund or donation as a donation. Hmm. So now expenditure incurred on preventive health care, sanitation, exposure to casual workers over and above daily wages, providing for quarantine facilities very much qualify as CSR spending. And that has given a platform, level playing field for to corporate that uh, just, you can say, partner with the local administration or partner with the hospital management and go ahead without, uh, uh, instead of just contributing funds in the hands of central government or state government. Second, was to allow all donations for COVID-19 related efforts to be eligible for 100% tax deductions. Mm. That is the normal donations in addition to CSR funds. Mm. And third is allowing companies to contribute over and about 2% minimum. That is also a, a change. Uh, companies were expected to spend or were requested to spend rather even directly to spend, not requested, that they can spend more than 2%. And they can adjust this excess spending from the years in, uh, in, in times to come to offset the letter. The excess against the CSR obligation uh, of subsequent years, hmm, if they so desire. So excess spending, they can spend and they may not recover. And if they wish to adjust with the tax uh, time CSR uh, liability, they can do it. So that freedom is given and that's why corporate world felt motivated. There have been few donations in kind also, including counseling, helpline, e-learning resources, masks, PPE kits, life-saving drugs, equipments, and food supply, testing kits or services. Hmm. Sometimes were given free and other times given a discounted price uh, and so on. Some corporations have successfully seized the opportunity by creatively deploying their funds to promote mental and physical health. Others have harnessed technology to create awareness. In both cases, corporations have made attempts to fight pandemic. Now, here is the list of some of the companies who have committed for certain funds, who have actually you know, contributed some funds. 
either to pm care fund to state funds or on their own so say for example ajim premji foundation who has come up with the total wipro group has come up for 1125 crore uh tata sons have come up for one uh, i mean tata group has come up for 1500 crore amani has come for 510 crore plus one 225 bedded hospital <coughs> separately ongc has come up for 300 crore school india has come for 221 crore and so on and the apart from this donation to pm care fund the other activities which they have taken are written on the right hand side that uh, even this what we say the 1000 crore of ajim uh, premji foundation which was in addition to its usual csr spending means this 1000 crore donation to pm care fund is not from csr spending this is in addition now csr under csr spending they have taken converted one of their campus in pune into 450 bedded covid hospital right tata trust has also spent for ppe kits testing kits modular treatment facilities and training to health workers hmm. reliance industries has also come up with 225 bedded hospital in uh, mumbai with uh, 100% cost bearing there is no cost which the government bears it same way lnt has come up with community welfare plans and lever- leveraging its expertise to offer assistance vedanta group has come up that it has undertaken relief com- uh, to communities in seven states imported 23 ppe machines to roll over 5000 ppe kits per day launch meal for all programs in addition to distribution of dry ration kits and so on so my objective is not to read one by one but this is what the gist which i could collect from different sources uh, and could compile that these are the Uh, you can say contribution of uh, corporate world in uh, management of covid 19 means they uh, they try to partner with the government government says facility right and some of the companies have not only contributed they also placed the fund means the funds are reserved even as on today they can spend and they are coming out Uh, as a what we have said now that companies those are engaged in R and D for them they can invest through next three years so even twenty two twenty three it will continue. Okay. So this two thousand ninety eight crore are for the uh, you can say reserve fund they committed to it they will uh, spend in future, right? of course 22 crore came from foreign sources and 53 crore um, came from individual sources but the rest has come from the government agencies and uh, the salary wise and the you can say the companies hmm. the companies control figures i already given you so uh, here are some glimpses hmm. the the other way the companies have tried to contribute to managing covid-19 uh, the itc and many other brands on the um, occasion of earth day 2020 now align their brands with climate change and cleanliness not with the just contribution contribution is separate some startups after recognizing uh, social conscience just not spending uh, out of csr budget that is usual they started waiving the rent of the persons who lost their jobs that's another way that's what the prime minister appealed na that uh, if you have tenants please waive their rents so some startups have waived their rents hmm. some companies performing csr by promoting social awareness for social distancing norms the some have uh, i mean they they cause changes in their logo You, we can see mcdonald or the coca cola volkswagen uh, this what you can understand from here say this is what mcdonald the mcdonald the logo m m is divided and distanced into 2n uh, so that is showing that maintain social distancing same way volkswagen the w and v 
they were touching each other now they are at a distance means keep social distance coca cola also the earlier logo was this but now coca cola all all letters are at a far far distance so that's what giving this uh, message to society and people that mental social distance in same way audi the audi used to have all four rings inter uh, connected but now they are at a four um, uh, four separate rings there is a distance so this uh, i mean this is how they try to even make changes uh, and pass on the message in the society that social distancing is the need of the hour few corporates seems taking medium to long term projects yeah the we talk now that uh, narrow sense and reactive mode and uh, broadest so the time was so pressing that uh, broadest sense could not be undertaken the reactive mode the damage controlling was the era so long term projects could not be undertaken and that's what it is saying that very few corporates seems taking medium and long term uh, approach while investing in csr projects food and agriculture supply chains or post covid livelihood support um, was the main because of the three year time limit the regulatory limit is also there that uh, the fund can be kept with the company for three years means a project chosen by company need to be complete within three years so there may be some projects which may be of longer duration than three years then can't be taken by companies that's the whole. more positive trend is that spending on socially relevant advertising socially relevant advertising this this is what socially relevant advertising example hmm. uh, around social causes okay say for example uh, related to environment gender equality and such and other domestic abuse and so on. now this if done sensitively and sincerely in a sustained manner is likely to aid in the form of long lasting positive social change then money on few discrete projects and uh, projects which are funded out of csr contributions and that's the what it mean that uh, okay money may contribute but then money may have its own impact but the other way the change which we want that this change should come in the social behavior so social change so social change there are other means which used to be more effective final takeaway corporate social responsibility and csr are two sides of the same coin csr and non csr means irresponsibility that irresponsible behavior can bounce back to them hurting their reputations and so profits and productivity and that's why one enterprise or one C uh, company should not dare to say no to csr how interrelated the world is and how irresponsible behavior in one part of the world can have a global repercussions that also we have seen the how uh, we were caught with the mm, mm, uh, covid instead of virus think of say other Uh, climate is a glacier melting sea level rising fishing wipes out uh, fishing wipes out due to plastic pollution and so on then it the devastation level could be much higher the shutdown labor migrations impact on supply chains may have a sobering effect on mindless quest for greater profits right thank you very much this is what presentation from my side now i'm open to your questions uh thank you uh, professor kesi and khabra ji actually you didn't take uh, extra time because uh, earlier speaker took 10 minutes of your time that, but still i wanted to finish <laughs> i wanted to complete it really i know i like your presentation because uh, it is really research based your presentation is really research based and uh, with a lot of contemporary uh, issues you raised many contemporary issues and uh, Uh, i really liked it and uh, um uh, just i wanted to because uh, i wanted to introduce because pertendu introduced you well but uh, you are a multi dimensional personality <laughs> so no. uh, one one dimension <laughs> one dimension he missed he missed the dimension huh. is uh, um you are very active physically also <laughs> physically also and uh, i came to know, i i came to know that uh, uh, i mean um, You used to swim. You are a regular swimmer, yes. and you are a regular yes. walker, and you are a regular yes. runner. 
and uh, uh, I got some news that uh, um, he participated five times in 60 kilometers walk over few yes. days from yes. Shillong to um, Masindram. So you mm. did it five times. That yes. is 60, 60 kilometers mm. walk. Yes. Yes, and yes. in hilly terrain, uh, I mean, uh, it is not. It is like a hill only, so it is not yes. simple plain road, right? Right. right? And yes. uh, and what made you to make very, I mean, uh, uh, enthusiastic about these physical things, and how you managed work from home during <laughs> COVID time? <laughs> so it, it must no, no. it must be a big punishment for you. That no, is no, uh, one thing I want to ask. No, and another no. thing is, um, yeah, an, an, it, an, another thing is. Uh, Regarding our uh, topic, uh, that is, uh, because I also motivated, uh, because I received some motivation from you, I should uh, share yeah. with uh, the participants, because when I yeah. had opted to be in Mizoram, you are one of the source of motivations for me. I met you yeah. in 2004, on yeah. April 15, when, yeah. I, when I had faced interview, um, yeah. uh, I mean, um, for a faculty position in Mizoram yeah. University, then yeah. I could... Uh, uh, take a clue from you that yes. when you could uh, travel from Rajasthan to Aizol in 1993, yes. why not yes. from Andhra Pradesh to Mizoram in 2004? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so so and, and so what motivated you? Actually, what motivated you at that time? Because I know you belong to a business uh, family and uh, yes. business um, is supposed to be in our blood. Then what made you? <laughs> <laughs> to opt for teaching rather than business. So these yeah. are some of the questions. <laughs> Thank you. These are not related to uh, corporate social responsibility, but any anyway, person question. But let me uh, come to your query. Um, in fact, uh, I undertake, I prefer to undertake long walk, like uh, what you cited, 60 kilometer walk. Uh, but generally, we don't get the company. Okay, so I can't undertake such walks frequently, though I want frequently. Okay, so I just made that okay, if I can do it once in a year or once uh, twice in a year, uh, um, sorry, once in two years is fine. So I look for such an uh, event if taking place, then I join uh, because I believe that if I complete this uh, task um, in a time bound manner. Uh, successfully, then it is a kind of medical test for my body, medical test of my body that um, I'm perfectly healthy. I don't require any other medical test, pathological test in any hospital. Mm. That's what my belief, strong belief is there. Mm. So I generally go for not only walk, even I have taken uh, toughest eco challenge twice. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, once I rode a cycle also for 200 kilometers oh. <laughs> <laughs> in a day, one day, morning to evening, uh, in, in, in 18 hours, you can say, uh, I rode uh, 200 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, my, my strong belief is this, that um, instead of spending money and waiting for three, four hours in queue before pathological labs to get examine our body and get certified from doctors, these are the better tests for uh, body fitness. If I could complete successfully, means there is no need of uh, consulting any doctor. I'm not having any uh, disease. That's mm. what, so I do that. And second question, what you say <laughs> that uh, I drove from Rajasthan to Shillong, uh, that is because of my, what you can say, bit adventurous nature. Adventurous mm. tourism. <laughs> <laughs> adventurous tourism. Uh, third thing, when you refer to my family background, yes, I definitely belong to um, business uh, families. Uh, you may call me Marodis. Uh, but uh, I'm less inclined to money and uh, making money through business. Uh, rather, I was more inclined to uh, adventure side. Uh, so I was taking part in that type of adventurous activities and uh, do something uh, different from parents. I mean, the whole, whole point was this, that do something different from what parents have done. So we did not continue the business, we continue 
different so we came to this side yeah i would be happy to listen um, yeah. the uh, the questions or queries related to my presentation since uh, there, there is some question uh, yeah. you know, sometime back i have seen some question um, uh, I, uh, i didn't see here yeah uh, in in 2000 uh, um you know, this is 2020 um, um uh, this uh, covid pandemic happened huh, huh. exactly 100 years back 1920 huh. if you take huh. 1920 exactly 100 yeah. years back huh. india uh, not only india entire world suffered due to yeah. spanish flu yes at that time there was no vaccination and at that time uh-huh. uh, medical technology uh, medical science not developed that much uh-huh. Yes. and the river ganga was full of uh, dead bodies ha huh. and after 100 years after hmm. uh, so much of uh, progress in um, science hmm. and technology medical science right. Right. same ganga river was full of uh, um, yeah. dead bodies and yeah. uh, 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 india didn't uh, prepare herself fully for yeah. second wave Uh, and though official statistics say that there would be 4 to 5 lakh deaths many studies internationally happened and international organize, organizations mm. they mm. mentioned it could be at least 10 times more yes and the governments they didn't have any statistics about Correct. how many Correct. migrant Correct. workers are there Correct. 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 and uh, india didn't respond properly to the helpless migrant hey, uh, workers and hey, almost every hey. alternative family in second and third wave they lost a family member this is one sir, dimension and csr sir, happened yeah. after afterwards it may be damage control uh, yes so, so what is your uh, let, let let me say share with you forget about india to uh, and its preparedness even the most advanced and developed country in the world that is us america was also not prepared to cope with or was not you can say able to fight with covid the lot of death which has taken place hmm, was in us not in india and that is why who and the the old world over uh, the world community were more worried about the uh, indian scenario mm-hmm. learning from uh, uh, american trends mm-hmm. that what will happen to india if that replicates Uh, or continue in the <laughs> same trend continues with uh, in india as happened in uh, us in fact in in covid management not only us all advanced countries mm-hmm. all advanced countries failed mm-hmm. though they were so scientific though they were so hygienic but you can say more they become hygienic And more they uh, technology lot of information technology no, we have yes, now yes. <laughs> no no but more they themselves distant from mm-hmm. nature Mm-hmm. my point is this to say you become advanced you started using hygiene products but then that way you are yourself distancing from the nature okay and that has gone to in favor of india mm. indians are not at a distance from nature no that is Maybe why my first two questions are also related to csr it is uh, isr uh, individual social responsibility yeah yeah individual. so, so individual. those people who have, who have who have very strong health in terms of immunity yes. they they survived <laughs> uh-huh. let me say let me say this sir. in mm. fact it is I, psr personal social responsibility or oh, isr yeah. individual <laughs> social responsibility that is deeply imbibed in our village fabric yes yes yes, yes, yes. that is deeply imbibed into our village fabric and that's why india could survive but not but not in urban areas yeah. but not but not in urban india not That's that what much i said that it is deeply imbibed only yes, in a yes. village fabric village yes, uh, yes. system of uh, management yes. see in village as on today also daily basis both time the neighbors used to ask have mm. you finished your food mm. if you say yes what did you eat क्या माल ताल बन रहे हैं आई मीन दे हैव अ कंसर्न विद अदर्स बिफोर दे ईट ओके व्हिच इज टोटली एब्सेंट इन अ मेट्रो कल्चर और सिटी कल्चर और अर्बन लाइफ इन अर्बन लाइफ वी हार्डली कंसर्न इफ समबडी आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन वी इंस्टेड ऑफ रिप्लाइंग इन सेम सेंस वी मे बिकम अनॉयड टू हिम व्हाई व्हाट नो सर आई एम टॉकिंग हु इज द हेल्प व्हाट्स योर कंसर्न यू कीप यू माइंड योर बिजनेस दैट्स व्हाट सो वी आर डिस्टेंसिंग वी डोंट नो हु इज दिस In, in fact there are many good things in our village fabric the moment you get down in village lifestyle lifestyle through, yeah through public transport 
that you will be captured by you can say five ten people. They yes, yes, yes. They will inquire. Yeah, no, like like yeah. CBI people, they what will inquire. <laughs> yeah, it is. So it is a social security. Yes, you don't yes, require yes. any other security. You don't mm -hmm. require police. You don't require. Then you can't be succeeding in your objectives if you are a stranger. If you want to uh, uh, steal something or thief, uh, have a different plan. You can't do that. You can't damage. That's a, that's why they are living in. So that has happened. Otherwise, India, since large countries, advanced countries were also not developed or not ready mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. uh, with that medical infrastructure. So in India, it was not a question. And moreover, in last 70 years, probably uh, medical health was given least importance. Yes, yes, yes. Moreover, our spend, our spend uh, uh, on GDP is also less. Moreover, yeah, yeah. moreover, our density was also very high, very high mm -hmm. density. Mm. Uh, population. Uh, public population. health we neglected uh, since long yes, time. We neglected. We neglected. We neglected. We neglected. Public we neglected. health we neglected. Yeah. In fact, since 1947, if you look into, everything was absent. Mm. Now everything cannot be attained in a short span of time. Yes, yes, yes. You can say. So, okay, industry, food, livelihood, poverty elevation, these were, you can say, undertaken in gradual phase. Okay, okay. Uh, employment. So maybe you can say, had it been not coming, maybe you can say in times to come, government could have think of that, okay, yeah, let yeah. us spend something on medical. In fact, it has happened. I, I, I don't, I'm not uh, pro-present government or uh, anti <laughs> government. But yeah. uh, see, we can see. They will not see, uh, knowing that this COVID will come, so we should um, uh, open negrim like institutions or uh, you can say, um, Ems like institution in all states, but they announce they come. But, but the, the criticism is the criticism is uh -huh. when there was no not a single case of COVID in India, uh -huh. we declared uh, um, nationwide lockdown, and we uh -huh. were very harsh and police uh, were very harsh towards a common man. At that time, there was not uh -huh. a single case. But in second wave, uh -huh. during second no, wave no. and third actually, wave, we neglected actually, um, uh, despite a uh, lot of this cases. was. This was the outcome of the person at uh, people at the helm of affairs and their panic and their strategy to combat. Their strategy to combat was this that if we can control uh, through lockdown, mm. that if movements are stopped totally and no mingling with the international um, uh, tourists or visitors, mm -hmm. then probably it will not spread. But that could not be controlled in a country of 130 crores. <laughs> okay, the moment could not be controlled. So thank you very much, um, uh, Professor Kabraji, and uh, nice to speak to you. And uh, thanks for giving your time. You know, uh, we know you are very busy as head of the department. Uh, of um, no, for your information, I'm not head at this moment. Okay, okay. I, I'm I'm relieved uh, for the time being. Very okay, okay, nice. Uh, uh, so thank you very much, and uh, we will meet. Thank after you very much. Rather, I'm 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 obliged to you uh, that you have given me an opportunity to uh. speak. <laughs> I don't know what is the outcome. Yes, I can see uh, one Indira Bagalkoti has uh, raised hand. Mm -hmm. Is she having any question? Indira Bagalkoti. I can see her. Um, she raised hand. Okay, so. Is there any question or query? Okay, we will interact with her. Uh, maybe uh, okay. have, now, now there is shortage of time. Hmm? Okay. We have panel Thank discussion you. in the afternoon session and at that time we will take up our questions. Okay, sir? Okay. Um, right. On your behalf, we will try to answer her. Okay. Right, we'll right. Thank, you, her. Thank, okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And, uh, okay. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now so, we actually we have taken more time. We have taken more time and uh, we will. Uh, uh, Professor, uh, no. Martindu, uh, short. I mean, uh, now we we need to go for lunch, and uh, shall we give time up to uh, two fifty something? I mean, one fifty like that. Rokhelaji, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, how are you, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, Professor Rakendra, we will meet again at one fifty because just now we completed this uh, completed this session and uh, we didn't have, we didn't have lunch. Huh? Okay, so, sir. We'll so one fifty, sir. Uh, sir, we can start at one for thirty thirty five also. 
Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Okendo is ready to take and uh, okay, but uh, yeah, yeah, participate.